Hello and welcome to the Bang Picks video for Thursday Night Football. We got the San Francisco 49ers traveling up to Seattle to take on the Seahawks in an NFC West divisional matchup between, I really think, the two obvious front runners for this division at this point with the Rams and Cardinals spiraling out of control. I'm your host for Lamps.com, Matthew Amato, joined here by Anthony Elio and Jacob Wayne. This three and a half point spread, Jacob, I mean, the 49ers laid it on the Buccaneers and we obviously have not been the biggest fans of the Bucks or their coaching staff this year, but still a very impressive performance with Brock Purdy. Are you backing them again this week? I mean, man, last week I, I put the Bucks in a teaser because I thought, well, it's a low score. It's going to be a low scoring game. Um, either way, it should be relatively close and it was a low scoring game, but one team did all the scoring and that was the 49ers. Um, but I think in the NFL, you want to fade a team off of a game like that, generally. Um, I think this is a good spot to do it. And I, I will be back in the Seahawks, uh, plus three and a half at home here. Short week, divisional matchup, uh, tends to favor the home team regardless. But I think you look at the plus three and a half, and there's a lot of trends that would suggest that this shouldn't be uh, with that hook. Um, so I relate to the Seahawks in that sense. But the 49ers still have some weaknesses to me. Um, their interior offensive line is still a problem that people don't really talk about. Um, they have some injuries now that they're dealing with. Debo Samuel is out. Brock Purdy picked up an oblique injury that he's expected to play through, but still a banged up Brock Purdy going into Seattle against, you know, it's, it's not a good Seahawks defense, but it's still a well-coached unit. And, you know, they rank, they still rank fifth in early down success rate on defense, 12th in success rate overall. And I don't think they're going to allow a ton of big plays in this game, at least uh, just from a coaching standpoint. But I think the 49ers defense can be exploited a little bit in the secondary as well. They've had some injuries at the cornerback position. Diamondo Lenoir has had a pretty rough go of it here. Uh, Chevarius Ward is a fantastic outside corner, but other than him, I think their secondary can be beat. Um, and it's really Nick Bosa or bust in terms of pass rush for them. So I think the Niners are great. I think they're definitely a Super Bowl contender, but I don't think they're this unbeatable force right now, and I think they're being priced that way. So I like it in the Seahawks plus three and a half at home here. I think they can definitely put up a fight and potentially even win this game outright. So I like the value. Anthony, I feel like you and Jacob have disagreed on like the last eight straight weeks of a Thursday night football video. So disagreement for this one. Well, let's keep it going, man. Uh, I'm going to lay the points with the San Francisco 49ers. It's like team Edward versus team Jacob uh, back in the oh. twilight days. So people in the comments, <laughs> choose your team. Um, I am definitely cool with the San Francisco 49ers this week. Brock Purdy is dealing with an oblique injury right now. I don't think it really matters. I think they could get a guy working a hot dog cart outside of the Seattle Stadium and have him play quarterback and San Fran will be totally fine. The Seattle defense is just not good. Uh, in the past three weeks, they've been 1-2 and two overall. They've averaged 31 points per game against the Raiders, Rams, and Panthers. Uh, overall, tw they are 21st in DVOA on defense and 27th in defensive EPA. Uh, has anyone coined the term Legion of Gloom yet? If not, I would like to TM that as soon as possible. Put it on some t-shirts. I'm laying the points with the San Francisco 49ers. And then there's me, where I feel like I've been in the middle of every single one of these, where I haven't really had a lean, though I feel like I've been doing pretty well. Um, This is a no bet for me, unless it gets under three, and then I'm betting the 49ers. Jacob, I thought, I mean, I think you're bringing up really good betting trend points. Um, And, and to be fair to Seattle, they've played everybody close. Like, you go back their last four games, 21-16 against the Bucks loss, 40 to 34 Raiders, but that was like the fourth possession of overtime that they finally gave up the big play to Jacobs. 27 23 against the Rams, 30 24 to the Panthers. But the thing is, they're always ending on the wrong side of these games, barring the Rams game, which if you lose to the Rams at this point, you should be banned from the NFL because that team is ridiculously bad. I mean, look at you last week. Um, but. I don't know. I, I cannot back this Seattle team, even though I feel like the betting trends and, and what you're saying, Jacob, it's short week. They're at home. The 49ers are banged up, but they're constantly banged up, literally week in, week out for the past five years. I think they're just learning to deal with it. Um. So, yeah, but but you're right. Like, there is no business having the hook here with all of those things happening. So, if 49ers get bet down to two and a half, which I highly, highly doubt they will, then I would take them. So for me, this is just a no bet on the spread. I think you can find a little bit better value elsewhere. 
and that elsewhere may be the total. I mean, Jacob, how are you feeling about the 43 and a half number? Yeah, I lean under. Um, just like I talked about, the, the Niners offense is banged up and their defense remains excellent. So I don't think Seattle's going to be putting up a ton of points here. I can see it being something like 20 to 17. 49ers honestly I think that's a pretty realistic outcome um so I, I think the under is a decent play I, I prefer the value with the Seahawks though and I'm not going to double dip on this game um but yeah I, I think the unders is probably the the right play there if you're gonna make a, a play on the total Anthony I would lean in terms of value I do kind of like the 49ers team total over 23 and a half it's minus 105 on DraftKings right now I think a lot of people are going to go with the under just because of those 49ers injury, especially the one to Debo Samuel. But if you look at it during the past four weeks, San Fran's outscored their opponents 119 to 34 overall, which by itself is insane. But Debo hasn't had more than 100 total scrimmage yards throughout that entire time. He hasn't really been that big of a factor in their offense uh, this past month. I don't think they're going to, I mean, I think he's, it's going to affect them overall. But I don't think they're going to miss too many steps uh, in this game against this kind of a bad defense. I think it's a value play. I'm not 100% sure I'm going to bet it myself, but I do like the team total over 23.5. I keep forgetting that I'm not muting myself. So <laughs> I'm with you, Jacob. I lean the under. I, and the funny thing is I kind of lean Anthony's side as well, where I do think the 49ers probably get over 24 in this game. I'm not going to bet it. Um... Actually, I'm thinking of doing a little play here where I just talked about how I really want to get the 49ers under that field goal. So I'm kind of seeing if I take the 49ers minus 2.5 and, and I go then to the over-under and give myself a little bit of breathing room for a 24-21 type of game and get under 45.5. So basically a couple alternates. I get plus 200 odds and... You know what? I'll put a half unit on that. So that that's where I'm going to put my money. I agree with your assessment, Jacob. This is going to be a lower scary scoring game. But I think it's going to end up a little bit closer to that first matchup than we're realizing. I think the 49ers really know how to play this Seattle team. And I think Geno Smith, while he's played well this year, it's kind of easy to figure out. And I, I trust this coaching staff in San Francisco to figure it out like they did in that first game where I think they gave up a total of seven points. I could see this being a 27 game, but again, giving myself some breathing room, so I'm going to go with under 45.5 and, and 49ers minus 2.5 at plus 200 for a half unit play. I was surprised that Anthony didn't bring up the previous matchup for his Niners case because I, I feel like that's the, the the biggest point in favor of the Niners is they beat them by 20 in the first matchup. But the Seahawks offense was really just not functioning well in that game. Um, three turnovers, 10 penalties for over 100 yards, two for seven on third down, and you know some of that is... The great play of the 49ers defense which to me I, I i know we've we've seen them have some great results lately but i still think they're a touch overvalued just based on their early season schedule but to me the seahawks will have a lot more success on offense at home here um a big reason i wanted to fade them last week against the panthers is their lack of run game uh with how banged up their running back room was but kenneth walker is expected to return this week so that helps them have a more balanced offense. And I thought about it a few times this year. I, I just really like Shane Waldron as an offensive mind. I think he's a great offensive coordinator. And, you know, I, I think he can dial up some stuff. I think they're going to be watching film from that prior matchup. And this is Seattle's most important game of the season. They're probably, probably out of the mix for the NFC West Championship uh, at this point. But they can still definitely make the playoffs. But they're hanging on by a thread a little bit here with some of these other teams kind of, kind of on the up and up, especially with, like, the Lions and a couple of other teams trending up. So... This is an absolutely pivotal matchup for the Seahawks, and part of me wonders if the reason they looked kind of flat against the Panthers last week is they were already looking ahead to this game and prepping for this game, because I, I do think this is their most important game of the season. So I like getting the home team here, plus the hook. Um, I just think that they're going to be very well prepared. I like Pete Carroll quite a bit. I like Shane Waldron a lot as an offensive mind, and I just think this team is at a point now where they've failed to cover the spread in four straight games, and I think they're at a low point in the market, and I'm happy to get them at this price. So, Anthony, I'll, I have a rebuttal to kind of Jacob's point, but I, I want to see if you have anything to say before I go. I'm changing, I'm changing my thing to an official play. I'm, I'm not doing a lean. Screw it. Over, two, under, over 23 and a half. It's an official play now. I like how Jacob talked you into the opposite bet. But my thing, Jacob, that I wanted to bring up is you look at that first game, and I will say, obviously, like you said, penalties and game script probably worked against them, but the Seahawks did not 
run the football. <laughs> like they average two yards a carry. Um, and my concern is these past four games. Yes, uh, Kenneth Walker has not been healthy for the past two, but they just look like they can't run the football. If you, they, uh, it's gonna be. I, I feel like for for Seattle to cover this game, it's gonna end up being on Geno Smith's arm and. I don't think that's a terrible bet, the way that he's been playing. And honestly, the way Tyler Lockett and Metcalf have been playing, they've looked really good as of late. But I would not rely on the Seattle offense to run the football with absolutely any kind of success this game. Like, it has been piss poor for four straight games. Like, absolutely terrible. I mean, I'm looking at all these. They did nothing against the Bucks. Four for 22 from Geno, 10 for 17 for Kenneth Walker. Against the Raiders, we had, I believe... 14 for 26 from Kenneth Walker. Then against the Rams, you had DJ Jowis, 10 for 37. Kenneth Walker was having a good game and got hurt. And then last week against the Panthers, I don't think they had anything on the ground. 9 for 26 from Travis Homer. Like, they have been really bad as of late, and they were horrible in that first game against the 49ers. Yeah, and the last thing I just want to say is, um, like, I agree with you. The, the Seahawks rank dead last in adjusted line yards, uh, second to last in rushing success rate. But... Uh, they're they're just not a consistent run game, but I think Kenneth Walker's very capable of making a couple big chunk plays on the ground, and I think that's really all you need in this game. I I, I don't envision him, you know, s- setting up and picking up four yards a clip every single time, but if you're asking him to pick up a couple of long carries in this game, I think he's very capable, and he's going to be fresh after missing that game a few days ago. So I like Kenneth Walker to have a couple of big chunk plays on the ground, and I think that helps set up some play action and different things for the Seahawks offense through the air. So. I don't know. I, I I definitely think this is a lower scoring game. Um, I would lean to the to the 49ers team total under, personally, with Brock Purdy banged up and frankly, just uh, he's an average quarterback. I, I mean, nothing that he's done so far has really made me say, "Wow, this guy's really good." I, I think it's just Kyle Shanahan and his coaching. But without Debo Samuel in the lineup and Brock Purdy nursing an injury, I just don't think they're going to be a super high octane offense in this game. I don't want to drag this video out any longer, but there was a stat that was pretty incredible from Brock Purdy. I think it was last week. His EPA, um, when not pressured, was negative 0.4, but his EPA per attempt when he was pressured was 1.45. 1. <laughs> 1. So and he's a very not no, I know not it's an same, outlier. But... <laughs> it's just so funny to me. Yeah, to be that good under pressure and just so bad while not under pressure. That, that um, funny, anyway, man. yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see how he plays this week. Obviously, there is quite a few unknowns going into this game, and I think that's going to wrap it up. So, if you want to check out the player prop version of this video and get our favorite picks for player props, go ahead and check out that video now. It is up right now on our channel. And if you like this one, drop a like. If you did not, a dislike. Comment down below your favorite bets. Hit the subscribe button to get more great content like this. And to finally go over all the bets, we got Seattle Seahawks plus 3.5 for Jacob. 49ers minus 3.5 for Anthony. A lean to the under for Jacob. Anthony making an official play on 49ers over 23 and a half team total points. And myself, I'm going with 49ers minus two and a half and under 45 and a half total points in this game at plus 200 for a half unit. Again, thank you for watching and we'll see you for the next one very soon.